Great. Well, it's very good to be here. Um, as, as was just announced, my name's Charlie Blair. I'm Managing Director of Gravitricity. Uh, we are an Edinburgh-based company, UK-based company. Um, and what we do is we're developing underground energy storage. And our core technology uses gravity to store electricity. Uh, we do have another technology I'll introduce very briefly that is very interesting given the result of that recent poll. So what I'm here to do is give a, a brief introdu introduction to Gravitricity, a brief introduction to what our technology can do and what we've done so far, and then explain why I'm here in the Czech Republic, in Czechia, uh, why Poland is a centre of what we're doing, centre of our attention, and explain the opportunity um, for us, but also for project partners in the Just Transition, um, so project opportunities there. So first of all, this is why Gravitricity exists. Um, as was said, I've worked in clean energy for 20 years. My co-founders have worked for probably another four or five decades between them in, in clean energy transition. As we get to close to 100% renewable electricity, we need a lot more storage. And what Gravitricity does is develop technology to accelerate the global transition to 100% renewables. And global is key here. We are developing technology. We will develop the projects initially, but our ambition in the long term is to develop the technology and sell that kit and that expertise into projects all over the world. So this on the left hand side is the core gravitational energy storage technology. I'll come back to it in two seconds. Just a hint, we are also thinking about hydrogen using our underground expertise and our experience of what works in underground spaces and some particular reasons why we believe hydrogen storage, buffer storage underground, which is a safe environment, and in particular situations a cost-effective environment, might make sense. We are also looking at hydrogen, but for now, the reason I'm here today is to talk about energy storage using existing mine shafts and the gravitational potential of solid weights. So very simply, on the left there is what our technology is. We lift a very heavy weight using an electrically driven winch to take electricity from the grid. That weight can sit at the top of the shaft as long as we like without any automatic self-discharge. And then we can lower that weight back down again, discharging electricity back to the grid. So in that instance, the electrically driven winch, the motors are running as motors as the weight is rising and as generators when the weight is on the way back down. So the core of the system, a very heavy weight to do this at an interesting scale, you need high, uh, very heavy weights, so big mass, and large drops. So a weight of at least 500 tons is core of the system, and a underground shaft of ideally at least 500 meters up to 1,000 meters deep. There's also motor generators in there, so power electronic equipment. The core of the mechanical system is a winch or a hoist, um, and obviously there's cables and a bunch of control infrastructure, which isn't shown here, but is absolutely core to our internal intellectual property. And it's the shaft is the reason why I'm here in the Czech Republic. And our team have been in Central Europe and particularly Eastern Czech Republic several, many times over the last couple of years. So what are, there are Czech coal mines that are typically around 1,000 meters deep. So deep underground mines, very good for us. That increases the age means we can store more energy. There are multiple opportunities, so not just one shaft, but multiple different mines, typically with at least two shafts per mine. And very importantly for us, they're closing soon. So because there is a, a technical challenge for the government and for the coal operators on what to do with these mines, that corresponds into a, an opportunity for us and a just transition opportunity to take dirty coal infrastructure and transition it to the clean energy infrastructure of the future. So this is what we have done so far. We, excitingly for us, last year moved from being a company that can develop models on computers and develop simulations and cost, cost models to a company that has actually built a big, heavy demonstration. This was 250 kilowatts. It was above ground because it was only three or four kilowatt hours. It was not a long duration system. But what we did with this system is confirm that the dynamic behavior of the weight, that's the stop, the start, the, the moving from fully moving in one direction, say discharging to fully charging, that we understand the dynamics. It's that second of 
changing speed, acceleration or de deceleration, where we need to understand the dynamic, the engineering dynamics of the system and validate our simulations and very importantly, develop control systems. But we also, of course, built a large, a, a large scale engineering piece of infrastructure for the first time as a company, working with our partner there, Hausman, our winch partner, a very big Dutch winch manufacturer, but a number of other partners to get this project built in Edinburgh. So this is the kind of why we now feel comfortable coming to the Czech Republic, other countries in Central Europe, and discussing the potential for deploying gravitricity installations in existing mine shafts across the continent. I'm not going to wait on this technical characteristics slide for too long. I could talk around it um, indefinitely, and I'm very happy to answer questions on it. For now, I'll just run through those USPs on the left-hand side there. We have a fast response. So the inherent physics of the system mean we have a very, a, a, a very high torque from a very high weight, heavy weight, not moving particularly fast. So it accelerates to full speed very quickly. So full rated power in less than a second. We have an extremely long cycle life, particularly compared to batteries. So 100,000 plus cycles um, with minor bits of replacement within that life. That's an order of magnitude or more longer than batteries and a, a project life, we believe, of 25 plus years. So this is a piece of electricity grid infrastructure not a short-term addition. Uh, a high round-trip efficiency, above 80%. That's as good or better than any other electricity storage technology. A very versatile power-to-energy ratio. There's nothing in the physics that constrains how quickly we choose to lower the weight, or if we want to do longer duration, we can add additional weights. But actually, at the moment, what's very valuable and very interesting, particularly in the Czech, uh, Czech Republic and actually other markets in Central Europe that are kind of opening up to new forms of flexibility is the ability to do high power, fast response. So output lots of power in say 15 minutes or half an hour. We have a small above ground footprint. Obviously our footprint is below ground. Um, and if we and we will sink shafts ourselves, we have flexibility on where we can deploy. So no inherent locational constraints. And then some additional benefits just compared to batteries there's no parasitic loads uh, when the system is operating that the losses are mechanical losses in our system. There's no need for air conditioning, for example. No standing losses. Weight can sit fully charged, fully discharged, any point in the middle without any continuous losses um, and no depth of discharge limits. And that one is very, very interesting in terms of how the economics of storage facilities or just the, the utility of storage facilities pans out and no explosive chemistry risk. And all of this would be pointless if we didn't believe we could get a significantly cost-effective lifetime cost of, of energy storage. And again, if you, if you want to get in touch, we can work on, on that levelized cost of storage. We've done a lot of work, including with Imperial College in London, on justifying and validating that. So that was the technology that we've developed so far. I'm now just going to spend four minutes explaining why the Czech Republic is an important market to us um, and showing what we've been doing, supported by partners here in Prague or companies that we've been working with, including Nano Energies, supported particularly by Diamo, the, um, the Czech government agency, I think agency, responsible for transitioning coal mines from closing coal mines from dirty fossil assets to positive for community assets of any form. We're getting positive support from them and from mine owners and operators of mines that are due to close. So here are just some pictures of our, in fact, everyone in that picture, our engineering team. Uh, Lukas on the right there, the left, left if you're being, having a photo taken, is our person on the ground. Some people on, online in the room might know him. Our lead engineer and project developer, Chris, uh, standing next to him. So this was a, a, a site visit just last month um, in Moravia, uh, Moravia rather. Uh, here's another site visit um, under, underground this time in m earlier this year. So we visited, I think, Frenchstadt mine, uh, Starich mine. As I've said, the attraction for Czech Republic for us is that there are multiple mines that are all on the point of closure. So at the moment, we are looking at multiple mines with a view to narrowing down to one project to be deployed within the next couple of years 
as a large European demonstration project of this gravitational solid weight storage technology. Um, and finally, we haven't just started looking. This is a, a picture from uh, a couple of years ago. Miles, our lead engineer, again at the base of another shaft. He was very excited at this point because this was the first time he'd got underground in a, in a disused mine shaft that might be suitable for our technology. Um, and very quickly, just to explain, I've said Czech Republic is the important market for us. I've said that we're working on identifying and checking out suitable mine shafts with DIMO, among others, with the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry. The British Embassy is extremely supportive. Our whole strategy as a technology company is to work with partners. So we are working with Hausmann, a Dutch winch manufacturer, actually with large manufacturing facilities here in the Czech Republic. We're working with control system partners, with power electronic partners, with uh, civil engineering construction partners to enable us to build these projects. Um, and this partnership approach extends to understanding how the market here in the Czech Republic and elsewhere in Central Europe works. And that's why I'm here in this room uh, speaking to you at a, a Nano Energies uh, a event. Um, we've worked with Nano to understand how the market for energy storage, what it looks like right now for a technology that, like ours that has the ability to cycle continuously with no constraints, um, the ability to output lots of power fast. Um, unsurprisingly, that's looking like a, a frequency response type application. Um, a, a, we have the ability to respond significantly faster and we can cycle as many times as we want. So we're un working with Nano to understand where the highest value applications are for our projects. And very importantly also, working with Nano and others to understand where we think things will be in five years time and 10 years time and 15 years time. Because this transition is moving at pace. <laughs> where we were six months ago, no one would have guessed that we're seeing the, the, the variations in peak electricity prices from trough electricity prices now. And I think where we will be in 10 years time, no one has a clear idea, but lots of people have lots of views. So it's very good to be here. Many thanks to Nano and others who have been supporting our projects. Uh, I'm very keen to speak to uh, anybody who's interested in what we're doing, both in the Czech Republic, but also uh, coal mining regions in Poland, elsewhere in Central Europe, in Spain and elsewhere. And actually the, the power companies, the DNOs, TSOs, who would be interested in understanding how our technology might affect their grids. So extremely good to be here. I'm very happy to answer questions either now or later on or by email. Thank you. presentation. Um, uh, I have a very basic question. Go. Um, crane. Mm. Uh, how is it different, you know, in comparison, that, in comparison to the crane? Because I saw some projects that, you know, someone have had a crane and they use exactly the same system. Is the difference that the, the mine is actually deeper? That, that, that is the benefit in comparison to just take crane and using the same system? Yeah, so fundamentally you need a lot of weight. Uh -huh. A crane might be able to lift 10 tons, 20 tons, 50 tons maximum. Right. Um, and it might be able to lift it by 50 meters. Right. A big crane. Yeah. So you need to double both of those numbers at least, if right. not multiply each of them by 10. So yes, the core of the system is the same as an electrically driven crane. Mm -hmm. And a crane is an onshore thing. A winch tends to be an offshore thing. And a mine hoist is what they describe in mines. But they're all the same thing. They're all a winding cable and that means that you have a linear motion here going to a rotary motion uh -huh. in, in the winder. So yes, it's the same fundamental technology. Hausman, mm. our winch partner, have absolutely made, make, on, make offshore cranes as well. Mm -hmm. But what we are doing is, yes, it needs a different environment because you need a lot of height mm. and you need a lot of weight. Right. And we don't believe that building buildings above ground is a sensible way of doing that. Right. And I know the company you're talking about, yeah, it's difficult yeah, yeah. not to, they've raised a lot of money yeah. on public markets in America. But I think, I think they will come around to doing something that looks 
different to, to what they've said they were going to do. They've already moved, moved a few times. Right. And we have a question on, uh, on Slido. Uh, what, what is the difference in efficiency versus pumped hydro? Sure. So the, the physics of the system, E equals MGH, is exactly the same. Pumped hydro, pump water up a hill using a pump, you let it back down again through a turbine. We lift using an electrically driven winch and we lower it back down again using those mm. motors as, as generators. Um, we have better efficiency than pumped hydro. Like the actual in operation efficiency of pumped hydro, you read anything from say 60% to high 70%, 70 mm -hmm. round trip efficiency. Mm -hmm. And we expect ours to be certainly very lowest to be the high 70s and up to about high 80%. Slightly depending on operation, slightly depending on how we design the system. But the kind of the inherent sort of high torque. Um, and electrical drive and, and mechanical system is more efficient than a, a hydraulic system, which mm -hmm. is, is inherently has, has both friction losses and, and losses through the, the fluid dynamics of the system. So pumped hydro is, is pretty decent compared to some other ways, compressed air energy storage, for example. Um, but our system is co very comparable with lithium batteries, who, which actually have a very good, at the mm -hmm. beginning of their life, have a very good efficiency. Mm -hmm. Understood. And uh, the last question. Uh, what about wear and tear of the system, cables? Sure, so absolutely we, we are a mechanical system. Mechanical systems wear and tear. There is, there is, it's not exactly degradation. So our system, uh, cables are a very good example. Steel cables are well understood. They operate many, 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 many cycles. A lot of, so some of our IP is in understanding how the cables degrade and monitoring how the cables degrade. Um, but a, typically a cable, we expect it to have a lifetime of tens of thousands of cycles, of full mm. cycles. Mm. That is already more than lithium batteries. And the cable is a low element of the cost of the system. So we need to design the system so that we can replace cables mm. after perhaps five, ten years. But cable degradation is minimal compared to the replacement of effectively the whole stack that you would need to be doing for lithium batteries. Right. So there, are, there are other elements in there that, that there is wear and tear. The, the fundamental core of the system, which is the winch drum and the weight itself, effectively don't have any wear and tear, though. They'll have a lifetime in the many decades, rather right. than, rather, certainly rather than years. OK. We have some more questions, but uh, you know, I will ask my colleagues to answer those questions uh, later on. Uh, sure. No problem. At all. Thank you very much, Charlie. Thank you. Very good to be here. Thanks.